What's up, guys? For today's guest, we've got the most caring and talented actress, Monica Sanchez Navarro, joining us. Now, Monica is a fourth generation actress from a long line of talented actors and creatives. Her father, Manolo Fabregas, flourished during the golden age of cinema, appearing in countless films and co starring alongside Clint Eastwood, as well as a multitude of plays performed with his wife, the talented producer Fela Fabregas, of which they helped usher modern theater into Mexico with seven different theater locations along with their careers. Now, Monica has a long list of telenovelas, but you can catch her in the most recent Como Dice El Dicho, as well as Las Buchones, and currently on the series Sinos Dejan on Univision. As always, please show support by hitting that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and notification bell, it really helps. Let's go. And there she is. Hey, how are you doing, Mama? I'm fine. I'm very happy to see your face. Uh, it's been a long time. It has been. I'm happy to see yours as well. We got Monica Sanchez Navarro in the house. Good to see you. It's been too long. Good to see you too. It's been a while. It's been a while, it has. Uh, Monica was just telling me that you finished a telenovela. Um, what, which one was that? Which, because I know you've done multiple. Uh, this last one, it's named after a very, very important song, Mexican song, that it's called Si Nos Dejan, which means if they let us. Oh, okay. And uh, the theme, it's because um, the situation of the soap opera, it's a, a lady who's married and has three children and, uh, well, adults, and, uh, and her mother also lives with her. And um, she finds out that her husband is uh, having an affair for three years. So she's so disappointed that uh, she decides to, to um, a divorce. And in the meantime, she happens to meet a guy younger than her, 15 years younger. Hmm. So it's uh, challenging for her to go through all the circumstances and at the same time being accepted that she's dating uh, somebody younger. So mm. it, it's a beautiful uh, soap opera. This is, I believe, the fourth time that uh, it's been done uh -huh. because it started in Colombia and then in um, Mexico twice. This is the third time that uh, they're producing it. So, oh. And it's here right now. It's in on uh, Univision, so you can see it. Oh, okay. What is that on? What is it? Univision. Oh, Univision. Oh, okay. Another channel. See? Univision. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not up to par with my Spanish. <laughs> so when you said there's, when you said it with the there's two TV TV channels mm -hmm. that uh, they're all all in Spanish. One is Telemundo. Telemundo. Yeah. And the other one is Univision. Yes. And, but, but how did you pronounce and this it? One, Univision. Univision. Yeah. See when you said it that uno, way. Uno. Like number one. Uno. uno. Un, uni, un, uni, vision. Uni, vision. Mm -hmm. See, when you said it uni that vision. way, I didn't, I didn't get it. And then when you said with the butchered American accent, the way that Americans butcher it, uh, I got it. I was like, <laughs> oh, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I am so rusty on my Spanish. It's, it's horrible. Don't worry. I, uh, I, I finished, I was watching, I, I follow up on all your stuff, I follow everything, but it's funny because when you post, it's all in Spanish, so obviously I have to translate everything, <laughs> so every time you post, I have to copy and then I go to Google and translate it to see what Good it's all about. for you. Um, and I finished, I watched uh, on Netflix, I watched um, Narcos, which okay. was such a good show. I was stuck Bless to it. it. It's so good. Um, Granted, I mean, it's about, you know, the drug cartel and all that stuff, which it's been done, you know, there's more to Mexico than just that. Obviously, Mexico is a beautiful country, but that um, that story and the acting in it is just phenomenal. Uh, oh, I'm happy you, you like it. I loved it. Now it's not so popular. Eh? Before it was like a big boom and yeah. everybody was doing that go mm -hmm. a series or, yes. or telenovelas. But thank God, it's not hot anymore. <laughs> and now they're doing different stuff. So. Yeah, it was Narcos, and then they did a Narcos Mexico, which was like the second okay. thing they did the spin off. But I watched I both of them. I was late to the game, that's why I was super late to it. But <laughs> okay. I watched it. It was all in Spanish, um, so obviously it's subtitled. 
and it was it was hard for me because every time I'd watch something I'd be distracted by like baby or you know something else would happen I'd have to do something in the kitchen or grab something and I would I would hear what they're saying in Spanish but because I'm so rusty it wasn't I'd have to go back and oh shoot I missed it I have to rewind <laughs> rewind <laughs> well that's nice that you can rewind Yes, it's, it was great. Yeah, if, uh, if it was on VHS like we used to watch, I'd have to pop it out and rewind it and do all that. You know, during the pandemia, mm -hmm. eh, how do you say it in English? The pandemic. Pandemic, yeah. Uh -huh. When they really told us to eh, stay inside and everybody was very afraid of going out, we all went to Netflix and all these eh, mm. places to see different stuff, no? And... Um, I I love the the, the uh, Italian language, so oh, I yeah. decided that I was going to watch whatever I would watch. I will watch it in uh, Ita in um, English or Spanish, and the the subtitles will no. I'm sorry. I will uh, listen to it in Italian, mm -hmm. and then the subtitles will be in Spanish. So mm -hmm. it's like an instant production. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was wonderful, wonderful. As you say, you roasted. You are not being able to practice, but mm -hmm. doing it this way, it was very easy and very rewarding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know a lot of people that um, come from other countries and they've actually learned English by watching, you know, English, American television. Um, my buddy, you know, you know Jacques. You met Jacques. Yes, of course. Yeah. So he he's fluent um, French and English, and he learned a lot of his English from coming here and watching uh, TV. I think he watched Barney or something. Of <laughs> yeah. course, of Some kids course. Shows. Yeah, he picked up a lot of English, so now he's uh, bilingual, which I have a lot of admiration for people that are bilingual because I know how hard that is. It's so hard to speak two languages. No, it's uh, well, people in Europe they speak five and six languages like this nothing. Is though, this is true. This is true. They're very accustomed. It's just the way of, of uh, teaching yourself to, mm -hmm. to be more aware, to be more sensible, to be more uh, curious. Curious, to, yes. Exactly. To, to want That's, to learn. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I used to be good at it, but I kind of, I always start and then I never, I never follow through. I need to actually commit and follow through. Well, now you're doing podcasts. Yeah, I am doing How podcasts. How is yeah. working? Um, it's good. It's 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 really good. Um, I we started with my buddy. Um, you know Michael. You met Michael and Cody before, uh, Michael Matthews, and uh, it was good because we wanted to do something creative. So they threw it out there that we should you know do a little podcast. So we were doing it, but it, it got hard because there's three people, three hosts, um, and so all of our schedules trying to line those up. Uh, it kind of got a little difficult with the schedules, um, and then the workload. Uh, so I eventually decided that I wanted to do like interviews or not interviews, but more just podcast chats like what we're doing here chats. with creatives. Yeah. So anybody that's creative um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be artistic creative, just anybody who's created something from nothing. Okay. So whether it be an actor, a musician, you know, because that's kind of our wheelhouse, that's that's the careers we're in. So the industry, that's that's who I know, but uh, also artists, painters, sculptors, um, even business owners. You know, if you've created a business, that's you've created something. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So so I just kind of try to motivate people um, by sitting down and chatting with people that um, are creative. That way they can kind of um, see what people have gone through and, and get a, a, a their backstory and maybe it'll help motivate them. Of course. Of yeah. course. Well, you can also try like people who cook that's mm -hmm. creative as that's well. that's true yes mm -hmm. that's true i just found out actually recently that i have a um a nephew so i have a, a half brother um which i we haven't seen each other in, in years since i was growing okay. up uh and i found out that he has a son and his son is aptly named nick grovener so I reached out Not to him. Kidding. Yeah, I reached out to him. And um, once I reached out to him, he was like, yeah, I think my dad named me after you. So Aww. my half brother, 
um, Doug, my half brother Doug, named his maybe named his son after me and so i reached out to him and we've been um in touch and it's been great and he's actually a chef oh lovely yeah so he i have a chef in the family now so he he's traveled the world and he's gone to all these different countries to learn uh cuisines from the country so he, it's more authentic than just going to some culinary school absolutely yeah. and uh, has he gone to mexico i believe so yeah he was actually in san diego he was um a chef in San Diego for a while. Uh, he just okay. recently went up north for the summer, but um, I'm assuming he's planning on going back to San Diego. But he's gone to yeah. Portugal, like a whole bunch of different random countries that you wouldn't normally think of. Like most people, they want to go to France and you know learn French cuisine. Mm -hmm. uh, he went to a lot of different random countries to learn. I, I mentioned Mexico because uh, it's amazing mm -hmm. how what a big variety of Mexican food we have. Right. If you go to the north side, it's different than the south and uh, mm -hmm. the, the products that they use and, and uh, the, the quality of, of uh, dishes, it's, it's outrageous. I mean, you can try one dish for years and, and it's a different dish. Mm -hmm. There's so much uh, variety and, and so rich. It's wonderful. I hope he will go. Have you interviewed him? No, I have not. Not yet. No, but I will probably have him on the show. But it's going to be kind of weird because we'll have two uh, two name tags on the bottom that say Nick Grover, Nick Grover. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the uncle. I'm the, the, the nephew. Yeah. And you and you could definitely tell we're related because he looks. We look very similar. So it'll be a doppelganger. It'll be very. Oh, nice. It'll be cool though. But um, oh, yeah, Mexico. Nice. You make me want to go to Mexico and, and eat. Well, I've been there before, and there there was very good cuisine. Um, but yeah, the different influences. Well, you're more than welcome to come home whenever you feel like it. I would def I'll take you up on that offer. Definitely. Please. I went to um, where did we go? Cabo San Lucas, which obviously okay. is a touristy spot, but. Um, but the, the, the food is good there. The food was great, yeah. And we, yes. we made sure yes. to eat at like those off the beaten path places. The okay. more like local, you know, they weren't like big restaurants. There's like little hole in the wall spots. It was good. And it was good. Uh, I ate crickets. Nice. I ate crickets while I was there. <laughs> <laughs> They're good, no? I, I liked them. I'm not going to lie. Crunchy, we were at, mm -hmm, salty. We were at, Yep. With um, guacamole and with the soft tortilla, it's like. Mm, see, we were at um, we were at a bar. I know, uh, we were at a bar, but um, in America here, you know, they have the peanuts on the bar for the salty and the si. crunchy. Si, yeah, si. and so there, obviously, they have the uh, fried crickets. And so we were okay. at in Mexico. We were in Mexico at a bar, and we were having some beers and when in Mexico. And some crickets. And some crickets. <laughs> yeah, I was I was munching on them. <laughs> That's yeah. nice. Um, I did want to talk to you, speaking of um, culture, uh, your family, you're a fourth generation actor, I actress? I am fourth generation, yes, yes of actors. So what's that like then? What's that like growing up in a family full of actors and actresses and in the industry? What was that like for you? It's very, um, very exciting. <laughs> I mean, when people ask me, why did you decide to become an actress? And I say, why not? I right. saw every single day uh, rehearsals, musicals, my parents building theaters. And it was so exciting that there was, uh, it just grew on me. It, mm. um, I, my admiration for my father, it's something that uh, I don't know if, if everybody can say that they admire the, their parents, but mm. mine were very, very special because not only my father was a wonderful actor, he was a producer, a director, an owner of, a the of theaters, mm -hmm. and my mother was a, his battery. She was so encouraging and, and always letting him know that he was so powerful and, and, and so bright and that everything that he did was so good that uh, she was always uh, pushing him to be more confident and uh, they had, well now we uh, because both are passed away uh, there's seven theaters that they built and usually all the, the 
pieces of theaters that they did was a musical. So it's so, it's like a dream come true, no? When you listen to this wonderful music and all this scenography and beautiful dresses and you, you really fly to a different place that uh, gives you so much joy and so much comfort in your soul that um, I'm, I'm very happy that, that I chose that career because everything that I do, it's, it's, it's not a, a, something that a, people would say, you know, oh, I have to go to work. And for me, it's like, mm. yes, I can <laughs> go to work and I can do something that I know that people are going to go uh, to their houses happy and, and feeling that, uh, that they, their lives have a, a purpose. Because sometimes we're so stuck in, in, in ourselves with the situations, whatever. Mm. But if you let your, your, um, your sensitivity, your, your everything to be flourishing and, and, and to be more in contact with the, the, your artistic part, your, your sensible part, um, it's like you fall in love every time you go to see a piece of fear. So mm. obviously that's why I became an actress. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And I'm assuming it was a pretty easy, easy transition for you to slide into since growing up in the industry, you know, seeing probably your father run lines and rehearse and, and being there backstage and watching the performances Absolutely. live. Yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't something new to you. So it was probably no, pretty I, easy to, ex- to put that know, shoe he, on. He, he, was, he was so gifted that mm-hmm. he... He played um, My Fair Lady, and obviously he was Mr. Higgins. And then he played um, uh, uh, El Violinista en el Tejado. How do you say that in English? The... Don't, don't ask me. Oh, my God. <laughs> How do you say El Violinista en el Tejado? Fiddler on the Roof. Fiddler. Oh, Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he was Tevye. And I could go on and on and on with all these a fantastic place and uh, can you imagine being in his foot and saying I can sing I can act mm. I have theories of my own I, I can uh, do all this production I have all these people that uh, uh, admire him and, and everybody was willing to work with him and he was so well known and so loved that when he uh, we'll have a new show. People would say, um, there's a new show that Manolo Fabregas uh, just opened. And people would go and buy the tickets without... Uh, uh, the, the name of the play was not mm. important. What without it was any knowledge of that it. He, exactly, uh, that he yeah. was doing it. And that, that will give you the, the comfort of knowing that it was going to be something uh, uh, breathtaking. And it was, it really was. And I was very, very lucky because the first, at the beginning, they wouldn't uh, encourage me to be an actress. It was like, no, 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 go and study and go and do something else, but don't be an actress. And it was very frustrating because, uh, uh, well, there's countries where the the fathers decide uh, whether if the girl is going to study this or that. And and I was part of that. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm 67, so when I was very young, 20s, he was like, no, 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 acting, no. Uh, they, they were trying to protect me in a yeah. way, no? But yeah. I was studying singing and dancing, and I was, I was well equipped. So uh, when the moment will arrive, I was ready. So I went to Spain just uh, as a travel uh, trip. Mm. And I saw a play that I knew that my parents bought and that they were going to put it in Mexico. And when I saw the play and I saw the uh, leading actress uh, that had the same age as I had at that time, it was like, oh, my God, that's me. That's me. Absolutely. Mm. That that role is for me and and I'm going to make it even better. So when I went back to Mexico, I mm. spoke to my parents and I said, well, I'm going to be an actress. 
and uh, if you want to let me do auditions, I would really appreciate it because it's important for me to know if, if I'm in the right track or if I should just give it up. Mm. But uh, if it's not with you, it's going to be with somebody else. But I know that you bought this play and I would love to do it. Mm. So I did audition for three months and nobody will tell me if, if I was doing right or wrong. I, they put all the choreography and the lyrics and everything. I was well prepared and then one day um, a photographer who was at that time, uh, newspapers were very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. So they, um, they, uh, this photographer came and said, uh, I need to take pictures of you. And I said, please don't because I'm not allowed and, and I still don't know if I'm going to be the, the playing that role. And mm. they were auditioning other girls. And he said, no, your, mo your father sent me to take pictures and, uh, and then he wants to see you. So when I they, he took the pictures and when I went on, a, on stage trying to find my dad, he was sitting on the fifth row and he said, hey, come on, come on here, sit here with me. And then he said to the photographer, is, come on, take some pictures. So imagine that picture that came on the newspaper for me was like, wow, it was the way I knew that I, I got the, the part. Mm -hmm. And uh, we played, my, my uh, the, the performances that I did were 1800 performances wow. that lasted three years and a half. And at that time, we would work from Tuesday to till Sunday. And uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday was two shows. So mm. it was a big run. <laughs> That's a huge run. <laughs> it is a huge run. And people, when, when they recognize me or, or when they know about me, it's like, oh, you, the, my, my, the name of the, of the, the a role that I was playing it was Clementina and sometimes on the road people scream to me hey Clementina and it's like wow so many years have passed and, but when you do something that touches uh, people's heart it, mm. it will stay forever so I was very very lucky that um, that, I, that was my first uh, time in my life that I was on stage Mm -hmm. And with a big production, uh, it was a musical, it was beautiful. The name was, um, it was written in, in, uh, in England, in, mm. in, uh, it, it was called After Me the Deluge, and then the Italians bought it, and then the Spanish uh, people from Spain bought it, and mm. then my father bought it. So every time it went through different uh, seed, um countries, mm -hmm. they will develop bigger and bigger and bigger and, and it was such a wonderful spectacle because it had two round tables. So every time that a scenography, a scenography was uh, going uh, out, mm -hmm. the new one was coming up and it was beautiful. <laughs> what can what? I say? What, what did your parents want you to do if you weren't acting? If you didn't do acting, they wanted you to study for... Did they have anything no. specific or they just said no, as long as it's not I acting? Think they just wanted me to get married and have children and, and live a happy life. Just not which, follow in, uh, your, in your father's footsteps? It wasn't not to follow his steps, mm -hmm. but being a woman, sometimes there's a lot of things that they don't take it seriously. Oh, okay. And and they were so busy doing what they were doing that they were doing so good and so well. I mean, building seven theaters, having five children, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. So it was like, I guess my mother would have thought, how am I going to uh, concentrate on, on Monica's career mm -hmm. when I have four other children, plus my husband, plus building all this theater. It was too much, no? Yeah. So destiny. When, yeah, it's ha when it's meant to be, it's meant to it be. happens. <laughs> and I was very fortunate because what I, what I had, this uh, opportunity to do such a wonderful play, it's once in a lifetime. Not everybody can say that uh, they play the, the role of their lives. And, and for me, everything that I've done through the years, 
el libro que viene has a special place in my heart. Definitely. And that and that time, that era, that was like the golden era of uh, sí. film and cinema and theater. You know, that was like the golden age of that. Like especially um, English, American and and Mexican uh, theater and film and television. Yeah, for my father, he he was very blessed because those golden years of theater that was happening in in, in New York and in London. Yeah, he was able to purchase those uh, plays and bring them down to Mexico. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now they don't do so many new stuff. They are more afraid is skeptical of, of uh, risking because mm -hmm. there's a lot of money involved but um, he was so lucky that some of those roles were perfect for his age so it's like one one day i was uh, when he was yeah uh, older mm -hmm. uh, i used to pick him up and go for lunch and, uh, at a place that has a lake and they, then we will after they finish meeting, we will take the bread that was left and we will go to the lake and uh, give it to the birds. Mm. And talking to him, I say, Father, do you believe in reincarnation? He said, yes, of course. And I say, what would you like to reincarnate in, a, in, in another life? And he said, Manolo Fabregas, obviously. <laughs> 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 Which I think is lovely, no? To know that what you did was so amazing that you want to come back being the, the following whatever he left. What he did, yeah. Come back doing what he did, um, the character. Did, do you believe in reincarnation? Yes. Absolutely. You do? Okay, interesting. Absolutely. That's yeah, I think, I mean, we're energy. I, and energy I, you know, you can't destroy energy. You can destroy energy it, is energy. So. It's either a negative energy or positive energy, but it can never be destroyed. It just can become something Absolutely. different. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a. Uh, it's very interesting. I just saw a clip a couple of days ago, because um, you know reincarnation is the afterlife, or what happens after we die. I guess is if that's what you want to say. Um, and some people, you know, say heaven, some people say, you know, reincarnation, some people say nothing, you know, nobody knows, though, for sure. Um, and I, I, I saw a clip of Keanu Reeves, uh, the actor. Okay. And he got okay. asked the same question. He said, they said, uh, what happens after, what do you think happens after we die? And he was very smart in his answer. And it was, it was great. He just said, well, I know that the people that love you will miss you. <laughs> and I that know. was basically I everything. Know. It answered the question perfectly. I know. I read it and I thought that was so brilliant. Yeah. That was so brilliant. But, you know, we we need to have better deal with death. Yeah. Instead of saying, I mean, I think it's smart what he said, definitely. But mm. let's go a little bit beyond. Okay. I think that uh, they they will miss you mm -hmm. if they don't if they don't know where to find you. But if, for example, myself, oh, okay. right now I'm staying with my son in Miami for a few days and mm -hmm. I cook for him. I just did some albondigas, which is delicious, no? We're ready I, I to have I miss your cooking too, while. stop. <laughs> and, and then I thought, oh, while I was cooking, it was like, wow, when the years go by, if he, if he wants to look at the memories that we have together, in food, you can remember your parents. In in uh, in a song, you can uh, bring back um, a, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. In a um, in a park where you hold hands with that loved one, if you go by, you can always have that memory. So memories are very powerful, mm. and there's a very fine line mm. between reality and dreams. So why not? Have fun with it and, and enjoy that uh, that you're not alone, that you are surrounded by the people who love you. Mm -hmm. And even in a perfume, no? I mean, I lost my husband and and it's uh, I have so many beautiful memories that it's like he has never gone. And, right. and you start to learn how to communicate with them in, in a different way. Mm -hmm. But it's it's inside of you, and sometimes right. you are 
uh, with somebody and, and that somebody doesn't go inside your heart. So when people go inside your heart, they, they never leave. They're always right. there. They can't be gone if you never forget them. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> and you know what's wonderful? That we actors, uh -huh. uh, we never die. Because yeah. all the films that I've done, all the soap operas that I've done, uh, everything that I've done except theater, unfortunately. Uh, but you can always go back and look for it and, and mm. enjoy it. Yeah, it'll live on forever because it's, it's it cemented does. there in film. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of family and film then, uh, with like television, uh, did you, you worked with your daughter, right? Cassie? On yes. Yes. Uh, show. What was it called? It was the the pilot. Was that it? Um, no. I don't know what it was in no. Spanish. What was it called? No, it was called Las Buchonas, a okay. narco, <laughs> <laughs> a narco series. But before that, we did a play in Los Angeles uh -huh. uh, for like for two weekends, something like that. Very short. But that was the first time that. No, actually, we worked before because we did. Aha. I, yeah, yeah. I did a, um, like, um, no, like, no. I did a play, a musical play, mm -hmm. uh, written by me and, uh, and design and everything for, uh, I was very ma uh, bad at mathematics when I was young. Mm -hmm. So I wrote myself a story that it was a, a woman who, or a young lady, who will come to the earth to uh, teach children how to multiply uh, by singing. Mm, so okay. uh, I was able to do it and I did it with my children and with uh, nine more children because uh, you know the 10 multi uh, tablas de multiplicar, I don't know how you say that. <laughs> and, uh, so each uh, song was a different uh, a rhythm, so it could be like a bossa nova, or like a, a cumbia, or like a Mexican music. And so I did it with my children. I did it in Mexico. It was very successful, and we ended up making the 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 music for sale, and as well as the video. Mm. And so that was the first time I act with mm. my children. And then the second one with Cassandra was in Los Angeles, and the, the third one was the, 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 the soap opera that mm. was called Las Buchonas. Okay. What was that it like It was lovely working? to work with was my it? daughter. That's what I was it wondering. It was lovely. Because not only do you guys get to ex do the whole experience of acting and film and theater, um, but you also get to create those memories together on the same Absolutely. set, same Absolutely. stage. And so it was like lovely because whenever, for example, if she wanted to sleep between takes, I will uh, take care of her sleep and, and, and save her some food so that when I will go out of the camper and she, and she will wake up, she will have a... <laughs> I mean, we were taking care of each right. other. Of course, and that's uh, yeah, a lovely like experience. mother and daughter. Absolutely, you, uh, you, yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna give me a trouble with Cassie. She's, Mom, stop! <laughs> <laughs> Telling all our secrets. No, no, I'm kidding. No, no, no. no. I'm kidding. At that stage, it's a long time ago yeah. that we passed it. Now yeah. we're all adults. Right, of course. Thank God. Um, <laughs> so that's crazy because your whole, your whole family's you know, been in the industry and is talented in one way or another, whether it be in front of the camera or behind the camera. Um, because Monica, you know, Monica does a ton of photography and directing. She's a great director, producing. She's a very talented. Yeah, so eventually, you know what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to get you and Cassie and Monica and just do some sort of film or, or, or episode of something and create something with everybody on the roster. You can count on me. Absolutely. <laughs> Monica is, is very talented and mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing how she can manage so many things at the same time. I mean, she has so many jobs because people adore her and they feel so comfortable working with her that it's like uh, whatever, if you have one hour, two hours, I don't care as long as you help me with this, 
and I don't know how she do it because she really go herself a hundred more than a hundred percent, three hundred percent to please everybody. And thank God she's very successful and she enjoys it. That's the key in yeah. life. Yeah. If you enjoy what you do, that becomes very easy. She's always um, juggling, but she has enjoyment from it because she stays busy mm -hmm. and it's something that she actually wants to do. So. Yeah, she has the character, no? She's, yeah. It's amazing how sweet and lovely she is, but when she's working, it's like, oh, she becomes this majestic woman, <laughs> my superwoman. That's a, that's a good word, majestic. Majestic. <laughs> what do you prefer more? What do you pre I'm, I'm, I already know the answer, but because every, everything is different as far as theater, film, or television. Do you prefer being on stage for theater, being on set for a film, or being on set for a, a series, TV series? Obviously theater, 100%. Yeah. Theater, it's, it's, it's a dream come true for anybody, and it makes me grow so tremendously, and it, it, uh, it doesn't let you fail. It makes you uh, more aware, more in the present. You learn to meet people, you have this feedback that you end up uh, juggling, mm -hmm. now that you mentioned the word juggling. <laughs> but um, absolutely all of the, the acting in different uh, scenarios are, are a wonderful experience. And, and TV, people would think that uh, if you do TV, like what I just did, the soap opera, mm -hmm. that it will be like a, a, a not so important as, as it will be theater or maybe a film. But uh, doing a, a soap opera, it's very challenging because you have to perform, a, you do one, two, three the most a rehearsals and, and, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So you, you really have to a, a work very hard at home with what you have uh -huh. in order to project uh, every single thing, the way you walk, the way you look, the way you react. Uh, um, in, in theater, it's, it's more, um, you have more a bigger stage, so that helps you uh, to be more secure what you're doing. But when you are being caught like this in, in yeah. a, <laughs> And on TV, it's different, so it's it's very challenging. And what we're doing now in Mexico before, and I believe in some parts of South America, they were using this uh, little mm -hmm. thing that you put inside your ear, and mm -hmm. then somebody talks to you, mm -hmm. which is very challenging because at the same time that they're they are talking to you, you are speaking at the same time, uh. and. Um, and now uh, this one was the first time that I did on TV without it. So mm -hmm. it needed to be everything by memory. It's mm, it's much, uh, how do you say, fresher. Uh -huh. uh, uh, it's more spontaneous. Uh, but at the same time, it's a big challenge because uh, uh, you have to memorize so many pages <laughs> and, uh, and and at the time when you do theater you rehearsal and rehearsal and you have all these the 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 cast you're always together and and, and you're repeating the same stuff every single day which is not the same because every day is different mm -hmm. and and people who has been on stage they can tell you that every every day is a different uh, performance right. But uh, on TV, you don't have that opportunity to rehearsal so much. So the responsibility is it's bigger. And especially because now people have so many choices that uh, they can uh, click and, and, and change yeah. and, and look for something else. So you really need to, to attract them uh, and, and tell a very honest story so people are, are uh, uh, intrigued on, on trying to know what's going on, no? Mm -hmm. That's a good, that's a very good point because, uh, you know, obviously theater is live, so the energy is different because the energy is there in the room. And like you said, every night it's a different performance. It's, the, no one performance is the same um, oh. because it's live and it's fresh. 
uh, and you're not being blocked as much. You know, there's some blocking as far as stage performance goes, but you have a little more freedom. But that's a really good point that once they're in the seats in the theater and they feel that energy and it's live, they're they're just on that stage. They just they only visually see that stage. There's nothing they can click and change over to something else if they get distracted. Whereas yeah. television nowadays, they, it's click, click, go, click, click, go. Everything's got to be quick, fast, short. But you know, Nick, the challenge is on both. On mm -hmm. TV, on, on series, on, on Netflix or whatever platform you're using, yeah. as well as on theater. Because if you don't engage people, mm -hmm. let's say you're in theater, and if you don't engage with the public, mm -hmm. they will go to the grocery list or they will start <laughs> texting. Or oh, that's I mean, true. It's amazing. That's the true. The beauty about the play that I did, it was wonderful. That I will say, move the curtain a little bit to see how was the public. And it's beautiful when you start listening to the noise increasing and, and people getting excited and, you know, ready to to open the, the state, no? Yeah. And I will see families that you know that they are not uh, in, in a good situation among them. Like they just fight or, or they're angry or whatever. Uh, you know? yeah. And then when the play finished, everybody was loving each other. <laughs> everybody was hugging each other. Everybody was like, oh my God, we are so gifted. Uh, this, is, this is gold. This is so, so... So rewarding. So you could look out in the audience and see those families or couples that like got in an argument on the way to the theater in the car, but then after the show is done, you can they're just having a great conversation and, and they're having a good ride home. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and they're singing their songs <laughs> and they're talking about everything that they saw and whatever it, it, it caught their eye or, or uh, I mean, there's so many things to see when you when you go to a live performance. That, yeah, uh, it's it's beautiful. Now, La Caja de Pandora, <laughs> Pandora box, Pandora, Pandora box. Yeah, once yeah. you open it. Um, now you've been on both sides of as far as like um, working and filming over here, and then working and filming in or or stage um, in America and in Mexico. What do you notice any differences, or are there any differences that really stand out to you? Did yeah, every on? place is different. Yeah, every place is different. As far as like the process I've done goes, a lot I mean... of, uh, I've done a lot of telenovelas. Well, a lot. I, I've done two telenovelas here in Miami for uh -huh. Telemundo. And it, it's very funny because there's so many people from all Central and South America that it's like a new language. I, they, they use so many words that they're in Spanish, but that we are not familiar with them. Mm, with and, slang? And, Okay. Yeah, so slang, it could slang be. Words. Yeah. And also the the mixture of so many cultures uh -huh. makes it so rich. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and usually you don't work with only Mexicans. You work with all over the country. And uh, it's lots of fun. So every time I do something, whatever project I'm on, it's mm -hmm. different. Because yeah. the director is different, yeah. the producers are different people, the, the actors as well. It's one of my fondest memories of 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 you. I have two really fond memories um, with you. Uh, one was, mem I don't know if you remember, when we went to go audition for, I forget, it was for some agency or something we were doing in L.A. And um, we went there together and then we uh, got our lines, our sides, and we went out in the hallway and, and ran through the lines. Just sitting in the hallway that's and running true. lines with people, that's like a, a memory that burns into your that's head. That's true, that's true. No, you introduced me to an agency mm -hmm. because I wanted to have representation. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was very shocking because when, we, when, when my turn came and, and I did the audition, the guy who was uh, taking the, the, who was, how do you say, filming or uh, yeah, filming, taping, yeah. Uh -huh, taping. Uh, he was like, oh, next, next, next. Oh, yeah. So there yeah, was they no, don't the, the, no, they don't care, obviously. No. The, you have no guidance. You have no. no no line to follow, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, I can do whatever I want. So yep. that's what I did. 
Yeah. And then uh, they call me and they say, yes, we want you. And mm -hmm. at that time, my hair was blonde. And they say, but we want you with your hair darker. So when they told me that, immediately I went to the beauty parlor. They dyed my hair. I came back and I say, is this fine? And he was like, wow, just an hour ago you were here. Now you're with dark hair. And I say, I love this. So let's do business. And yes, I was represented by that agency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. But when I, thanks to you, but when no, I was all went you. back to, had nothing no, to do with me. but nope. you were, you introduced me and you were giving me the comfort of being uh, together. So it was, I was just it there was to show there. you support and uh, everything else is all on you and you did it all by yourself. You did it all on your own. So, but I just that's remember, I just nice. remember reading lines and going out in the hallway and that's just like a fond memory I have. <laughs> that one, that one. And then also, um, I mean, we have a lot of memories, but I remember one um, that stands out because um, you've always been, you know, a mu you know, I call you mama, but you've always been muddly to everybody. You're very caring and, and take care of everybody. But um, speaking of food earlier, um, speaking of food. We, I think it was Cena and I, me and Cena were um, uh, overeating, and uh, I have etiquette. <laughs> and I don't know what happened this day, but I was eating and I did something. There was like food on my plate, and I did something with my finger <laughs> to get it up. And I just remember my hand was here, and I just remember I was eating, and all of a sudden your hand just comes over and <laughs> it just slaps me. <laughs> It just it just comes in and just slaps my hand, and I'm like, whoa, what? And you're like, fork and knife, and you like hand me a fork and knife to make sure that I picked up that little bit left on my plate with a fork and knife. It was so funny. I'll, I won't you forget know, that. You know, my my children's friends, they they when they were at home for me, it was like, okay, I'm gonna educate whoever she is sitting at the table or mm -hmm. whatever it's going on and and if they're with friends or if they're alone it goes for everybody mm -hmm. so at some time my children were like come on ma you don't have to tell them what to do and it was like obviously nobody's telling them and, and it's, <laughs> it's there are things that they are important and yeah why nobody's teaching I? them yeah nobody's telling you absolutely right. i mean people who grab the fork and like this and oh. they cut it's like oh my god what's yeah. that i mean there's so many good things to do that why you do it that way so i will tell my children eh, I, I, that's the way this house works and, mm -hmm. and that's it no but years later all of the friends will say oh thanks to you yeah i learned this and yeah. i learned that <laughs> i remember my my I, I don't know who it was who say oh i'm stuffed and i say are you an animal are you a, a teddy bear what do you mean by stuff i mean you can say i'm satisfied I I I I'm, I don't want any more food. Thank you so much. But stop! What is that? <laughs> I think so that's an American later, slang. Thank me. Yeah, that's so you can't even say stuffed. That's that's so funny. Because no. the, no, the next, no, no. what that reminded me of was um, etiquette. Like we were we were talking we were speaking of etiquette, and um, my my grandma on my father's side, my grandmother was very very proper. And she would come visit when we lived in Colorado, and we would have pizza. And I mean, she wasn't a huge fan of pizza, but she always had to have her fork and knife. And she had to eat everything with fork and knife. Now, some people say that's a sin if you're eating pizza, but she Absolutely. would tuck her napkin in and make sure it was covering her blouse. And she would have her fork and knife, and she would sit up properly, and she would cut the little corner <laughs> off the front of the pizza, eat it, switch hands, put the fork down, and then go, I'm stuffed. <laughs> I'm like, Grandma, you I'm ate stuffed. just the little corner of the pizza, but she did say she was stuffed. <laughs> so she, she slipped up there. But I think that's just an American saying, yeah, I'm stuffed, but that's funny. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure not to say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Teach your child not to yes. damn stuff. <laughs> Speaking of manners and children, that that is something that bothers me big time because nobody teaches children any more manners. They, they, I don't hear any please or thank you, and I'm huge on that. Always, I always make sure my kids say please and thank you. They always have to say it, and everywhere Absolutely. I go, I see children that are 
give me, give me, give me, mom, you know, take this, take that. No, please. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. And even some adults are like that now. And I mean, I see the child do that and I'm not mad at the child. I just, I'm mad at the parent because they're the ones that Absolutely. aren't teaching them. Absolutely. And being grateful is a beautiful part of your life. It, it, yeah. it comes, it comes around. It's not a, it, it doesn't only come one way, it, it also comes back. So why not doing it the right way? Yeah, definitely. That um, we were at the carnival the other day, the state fair, and um, we were sitting there watching our friends wait in line. And there was some kid with his parents in line and their grandmother was sitting near us and she's got an arm full of stuff. And the little kid, and he was not little, I mean, he was 14 years old at least, so he knew better. He takes his hat off and shouts across the, the thing, Grandma, come get my hat. And I just sat there looking around like, really? No, no, that wasn't a question. That was more of a demand. It wasn't even, there was no please or thank you, but it wasn't even, Grandma, can you come get my hat? please it was grandma come get my hat and i was infuriated i just stared at the parents the whole t- until they got off the ride i just kept staring at them and cena goes stop looking <laughs> but like, you no. know what the, the damage is done to the children yeah because if they're so demanding they will expect life to be that way and that's mm-hmm. not the way it is True. And, and nobody responds nicely to a demand so so rough so yeah. uh, so willingly or demanding yeah if you demand something absolutely nobody's gonna willingly wrong yeah absolutely wrong because the mean, poor the poor grandmother shuffled over there other. like holding a bunch of stuff she shuffles over there and gets the kid's hat and then shuffles back over it and like she's a lot older she's elderly like you shouldn't absolutely. no that should never happen absolutely absolutely but <laughs> they'll learn eventually they'll learn the hard way <laughs> oh absolutely if they, whatever they the don't butt. learn at home yeah. they learn it on the street on the streets yep. <laughs> yeah yeah one time teach them. three times a thousand times until you learn it yep uh, and well. they say that it's it's very important for for uh, a in your life to be at a room where everybody else is more intelligent and brighter and, and uh, more educated than yourself. Mm-hmm. And then you can uh, uh, reach out to, to a better way of life and not the opposite. No, you're being the smartest and, and everybody below you. It doesn't work like that. Right. You need to be surrounded by people first that, that they are in, in love, in a good uh, a place. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be a, a economical or physical or whatever just in harmony in, in the people who are willing to 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 enjoy life and to be honest and to be fair and to be noble mm-hmm. noble. noble that is noble. so important that's mm-hmm. a good word mm-hmm. noble <laughs> and it's inside of you everybody has it it's right. not a privilege for some it, it you just have to reach out and, and look for it but it's in there it's there uh well, well i guess we will wrap it up Mom, I appreciate you jumping on and thank ah, you for it was taking a the pleasure. time. It was so great catching up with you. Seeing you for such a long time. I know. I can't wait to see you. Uh, I'll see you in person uh, next month in September. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. I'm looking forward to see your wife, to see your son, to embrace and, and, and uh, catch up. Yes, definitely. We will have, we're definitely going to do that in person. So, um, do you want to tell people how they can find your um, the tell people how they can find your telenovela? Sure, it's on Univision. Univision. And uh, here in Miami, it's at eight o'clock. I think it's right now. And uh, it's called Si Nos Dejan. If they let us, Si Nos Dejan. Awesome. And Thank my you. name is on, on, on that uh, soap opera. Soap opera. It's Yaya. Yeah, yeah 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 okay y-a-y-a perfect and then you have a plethora of other uh, soap operas and um, shows that you've done um, those are all on imdb the links will be down below on the video if you're watching the video if you're listening to the podcast um, you can go to imdb.com um, and it's monica sanchez navarro 
N A V A R R O. Uh, and then Instagram is a good handle too because she's always posting and updating stuff on there. Uh, and that's Monica S N A C T R I Z. How do you, how do we pronounce Monica. that? It will be Monica Sanchez Navarro, but just the first letters of my last name, Monica S N, and then actriz. 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 There it is. That's what uh-huh. it is. S N A C T R I Z. Okay. Perfect. Got it. Perfect. Perfect. I, I appreciate you um, telling about your show because I would have butchered the saying and and the the title. So I appreciate you introducing it. Normally, I'm the one that does um, the credits and stuff and introducing people's stuff, but. I would have made it 10 times worse. So thank you. Yeah, you're a safer. You're a safer. And it's beautiful what you're doing. Thank it's, you. I appreciate it. Uh, to get closer with, with the more intimate and, and, and people yeah. that you know, mm-hmm. it makes it more, more uh, friendly. Right, because it's just a chat, a conversation. It's not necessarily a direct interview that we're doing. We're just chatting about anything and Absolutely. everything. And the people that um, see you and, and admire you and look up to you and, and want to follow in your footsteps, they get to know you better um, than just what they see on the screen or on theater. Uh, and then it can also help motivate them because they see you doing it and they can kind of take those steps. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. It's a beautiful career. So I hope they, this will encourage a lot of actors and actresses to I, I'm to follow sure it already does. their dreams. I'm sure it already does. All right, Mama. Well, I love you. I will uh, see you in September. And, I um, love you. I love you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. I enjoy very much this chat. And uh, it was a privilege to be here with you and with all of your audience. No, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. All right. I love you. Talk talk later. Bye.